wanted to talk about what it means to have a good life. I know it seems like it's so easy, but I think a lot of people don't even understand what that means. Um, I've probably said this over and over again. I have an amazing life. I have a wonderful life. I, uh, God has given me um, so many amazing things, and I, I appreciate them. I mean, I'm thankful for them every day. And but I think I I want to share with you how you could have an amazing life, how you could live happy, how you could uh, have the the blessings of God in your life, and not just be some religious thing, but that you can see that God is real and he wants you to live in this blessing every day. So first of all, I started, I kind of made a quick list. And one of the first things, and this is really important, is stop trying to impress everyone else. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2 says, we don't look for the praise of men. You know, it's sad. A lot of times people miss out on God's best because they care too much about what other people think. If you live your life for other people, you are always going to be unhappy. If you live your life constantly caring about what other people think about you, what other people are going to say about you, um, you're never going to enjoy God's best. Um, we're not supposed to be people pleasers. I mean, obviously, Jesus never was. He didn't make everybody happy. Um, I'm not obviously trying to go out of my way to be a jerk, but you know, some of the things that I believe or think or say offend you, I apologize they do, but that's fine. I mean, I have a good life and I'm not here to impress people. I just want to impress God. And honestly, he's already impressed with me because he loves me just the way that I am. So stop trying to impress everyone else. It's never going to get you anywhere. The second thing is stop caring, um, not just about other people and what other people think, but in, with life in general. Jesus said, don't worry about your life. Uh, it's not something that you should care about. Uh, the problem is when people get so tied up and and caring about their own life and how things are going to work out. Am I going to pay the bills? Am I going to have a car payment? Or am I going to get food on the table and all this stuff? I mean, you're going to completely miss out on things. When God has the answer right in your face, staring you right in the face, if you're so caught up in yourself and worrying about your own life, you're going to miss it. Stop caring about yourself. I find the less I care about myself, the less I put myself first in my life, the more God puts me first. Um, when I care about other people and about the other things that people need and caring more about those things than myself, life is easier. Stop caring. When people tell you to take care, say no thank you. I don't take care. Care doesn't belong to me. Uh, First Peter says, casting all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. God cares for you. He wants your cares. He is the caretaker of your life. He wants to take care of you. Let him. Another thing, realize that prayer is powerful. It's sad because we neglect this powerful weapon we have as Christians. We forget God wants us to pray first. Uh, we're always rushing out to try to change something or try to do something. And nine times out of 10, I think a lot of times, I mean, actually nine times out of 10, maybe even 10 times out of 10, we do make things worse. Stop trying to figure it out on your own. Stop, take a moment, pray, ask God what his word says about it, and then find it in the Bible and believe it, stand on it and pray about it. You got a problem with somebody, don't go around and get in their face, pray about it. Pray for them. Um, you got a problem at work, you got a problem with your boss, you got a problem, pray first. If you always choose to pray first, everything's going to work out. Because God will tell you if he wants you to do something, because sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he just wants you to keep your mouth shut and pray and just believe he's going to work it out in his time. Second thing you got to realize, right along those lines of, of, of praying first, and that's out of Philippians 4, uh, uh, we're praying always with all types of prayers and supplications uh, to make prayers. And, and so... Along with that, remember that your words are powerful. People have a problem with that. I don't know why. God spoke and the world leapt into existence. I mean, he said, let there be light and there was light. He said, you remain in his image. He said in uh, Proverbs 18 that the power of life and death is in your tongue. In James, he says a tongue is like a rudder of a ship. Though it's a small little thing, it can change the course of your life. Your words are powerful. Use them properly. Don't say things about you that God didn't say. Don't say that you're dying, you're sick, you're never going to be able to do this, that you're a sinner, that you're all these horrible things. No, God said you're blessed. God said that you're his child. God said you're a king. God said that you're 
always being led through a life in victory. God wants you always to come out on top. That is what God wants for you. And if God says that, I would rather say the things that he says, because I realize my words are powerful. The things that I say about myself and about other people is powerful. Watch what you say. Another thing is you don't understand everything, and that's okay. You have to be okay with the fact that you're not going to understand everything. And not only that, you will change. If you think the way you are right now is the way you're going to be 20 years from now, oh my gosh, that's horrible. I mean, I'm constantly changing the things that I think, the way that I view the world. Because, because we're, the Bible describes this clay and that God is the potter and he's molding us and creating us. It's not just like a one-time thing, bam, and then you're perfect. No. When I first became a Christian, yeah, I mean, I changed a lot of things inside of me, changed, but ultimately God was working on me. And it's a journey. It takes a lifetime. He's constantly making changes. Understand you don't, you, you just, you're never going to figure everything out and be okay with it. Understand you will change. Understand the things that you think of the way that you look at things will change. And accept it. Be okay with it. Don't let that bother you. Another thing, and this is kind of an easy one, is watch what you eat and exercise. God gave you one body. Take care of it. You know, don't take it for granted. I mean, don't just throw it aside and act like it's no big deal. You know, it's sad that Christians get so caught up in, in sin. You know, I don't drink. I don't cuss. I don't smoke. But they don't really have a problem with sitting down and eating some giant amount of food and you know, it's sad because how many preachers out there, I mean, I'm not trying to knock preachers, but look at preachers that go to churches and look at their bellies. I mean, good gosh. You know, and if that, you're one of them, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend you, but seriously, take care of the body God's given you. You know, take some time to read. You know, I, I would never make a religion out of diet, but because the Bible says you can't do that. I mean, don't judge a man by what he eats. But God does tell you how to eat if you just listen to him. There are certain things that just aren't made to eat. He says, don't eat that. There's probably a reason why he didn't want you to eat that. So watch what you eat, exercise. God gave you one body. Take responsibility for it. Take care of it. And the last thing is expect God's best and nothing less. Ex expect at all times God's best and nothing less. God said specifically about you. In Jeremiah, that the thoughts that he has towards you are thoughts of peace and prosperity and not calamity, to give you a future and a hope. God's will is for you to be blessed. God's will is for you to be healed. God's will is for you to be prosperous. God's will is for you to have a good life. That is God's will for you. There's a, a psalm here I want to read real quick and finish this up. The Psalms 21. And in verse, starting in verse 2, he says this. He says that he, he has given him his heart's desire that he has not withheld the request of his lips, that he, that you, uh, you meet, meet him with blessing of good things, and you set a crown of fine gold on his head. He asked of thee, and you did give to him length of days forever and ever. His glory is great through thy salvation. Splendor and majesty you put upon him, that you make him to be blessed forever, for you have made him joyful with gladness in your presence. God's will is for us to have our heart's desires when our heart is lined up with him. Because honestly, when we do these things, we put God first in our life. We pray first. We, we use our words correctly. We live life the way God wants to. We stop trying to impress other people and we put God first in our life. We seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. All of these things are added to us. God gives us our hearts to die. He doesn't withhold the things of our lips. That's why it's so important. We gotta watch the words of our mouth. He doesn't withhold those things from us. He blesses us with good things. We're most blessed forever. For you make us joyful, God. You make us joyful with gladness in your presence. That is his promise to you. God's will is for you to be blessed. Believe it. Live by it. Expect it every day of your life. And I promise you, I promise you, get a hold of this and your life will never be the same. This could be a big change for you. Just taking taking control of this one thing in your life. Just starting with one thing and just saying, God, I believe that your will for me is to be blessed. God, I expect your best and nothing less. Start today. Man against man. Can any nation stand?